uh, as much attention to it as we should, but it is a very critical and an important part of human development. Um, and so I think we should begin to pay a little bit more attention to it, and we hope that with this report, that's what we have done, that there is a visibility that has been created so that uh, we begin to think about how technologies can be uh, uh, used uh, to help us adapt to climate change. I'm going to cover four points today. What are the, some, some of the challenges that we've we encountered on the road? Um, and then I'll present a framework that we used throughout the entire study um, that uh, came from uh, a number of interventions. Now, so on the top hand side is, those, is a climate that framework um, that specifically relates to building our response capa capacity and addressing the drivers of climate change. On the left-hand side is where we began to talk about ICTs and how ICTs specifically help us to uh, link with uh, those uh, drivers of vulnerability. I have cut that short um, so that we could get a better picture of it. But if you go into the report, you'll see in details what that means. Um, so we categorize the ICTs into two large categories. Uh, Small-scale ICTs, such as your M payment and mobile money transaction systems, um, your knowledge management systems that enables people to be able to share knowledge and information about climate variability and climate change um, um, cases so that they can help themselves adapt up to your large scale ICTs, which consist of your sensor networks, which you have to situate in certain strategic places in order they, that they can provide for you constant flow of data and um, information that helps you as a country or as, uh, as a, uh, a group to make the kind of informed decision that is based on evidence um, over a period of time. And um, at that same level of large-scale ICTs also include your satellite systems, uh, your weather monitoring systems. In Uganda, I believe, in the report, um, um, during our field, field study, we went into the country and the gentleman from the meta department told us that um, a few years ago, I think they had about 30 weather stations that were functional, were working, providing all the information that they needed. But at the, at the moment, a country like Uganda, for instance, has only three functioning weather stations. Um, how can you make informed climatic decisions from that, for instance, as a country? And I guess the question also goes back to all of you. Um, how many weather stations do we have in our countries and how, how are we basing our agricultural information based on the, the amount of weather stations that are available and the kind of data that is coming from them. So those kind of questions are questions you want to ask yourself. If these large-scale ICTs are not available in our countries to provide the evidence, how are we basing our decision and what are we basing our decisions on? The cases that we profiled um, in three particular sectors, um, I did say earlier that we're looking at those sectors, um, but we, we kind of focused in three sectors, Uganda and, and three countries, uh, where we deep dove into those uh, sectors, Uganda, Senegal, and Malawi. In, in Uganda, we looked at agriculture, and a very important project came out, which had to do with um, uh, community knowledge worker. Now, so on the top hand side is those is a climate ch that framework um, that specifically relates to building our response capa capa capacity and addressing the drivers of climate change. On the left hand side is where we began to talk about ICTs and how ICTs specifically help us to uh, link with uh, those uh, drivers of vulnerability. I have cut that short um, so that we could get a better picture of it. But if you go into the report, you'll see in details what that means. Um, so we categorize the ICTs into two large categories. Uh, Small-scale ICTs, such as your M payment and mobile money transaction systems, um, your knowledge management systems that enables people to be able to share knowledge and information about climate variability and climate change um, um, cases so that they can help themselves adapt up to your large-scale ICTs, which consist of your sensor networks, 
which you have to situate in certain strategic places in order they, that they can provide for you constant flow of da data and um, information that helps you as a country or as, uh, as a, uh, a group to make uh, the kind of informed decision that is based on evidence um, over a period of time. And um, at that same level of large-scale ICTs also include your satellite systems, uh, your weather monitoring systems. In Uganda, I believe, in the report, um, um, during our field, field study, we went into the country, and the gentleman from the Met Department told us that um, a few years ago, I think they had about 30 weather stations that were functional or working, providing all the information that they needed. But at the, at the moment, a country like Uganda, for instance, has only three functioning weather stations. Um, how can you make informed climatic decisions from that, for instance, as a country? And I guess the question also goes back to all of you. Um, how many weather stations do we have in our countries, and how, how are we basing our agricultural information based on the, the amount of weather station that are available and the kind of data that is coming from them. So those kind of questions are questions you want to ask yourself. If these large-scale ICTs are not available in our countries to provide the evidence, how are we basing our decision and what are we basing our decisions on? So the cases that we profiled um, in three particular sectors um, I did say earlier that we're looking at those sectors, um, but we, we kind of focused in three sectors, Uganda and, and three countries, uh, where we deep dove into those uh, sectors, Uganda, Senegal, and Malawi. In, in Uganda, we looked at agriculture, and a very important project came out, which had to do with um, a community knowledge worker, also to build the capacity for integrating ICT's international strategic adaptation plans. Right now, a number of countries are going into uh, producing their national adaptation program of actions, which are plans that countries have to, uh, least developed countries have to put out in order that, um, you know, they can share with the rest of the international community about what their intentions are for adaptation to climate change. Now, countries that are not LDCs have an opportunity to pr provide um, what they call their national communication um, documents which help them to adapt or, or sorry show their strategies for adaptation to uh, for adaptation to climate change uh, a number of countries are going through this process of creating these documents right now so to our institutions that uh, can help and influence and to our government agencies I think the opportunity exists that we see how we can begin to incorporate ICTs into those adaptation programs uh, uh, national Adap adaptation plan of actions and uh, country communications. A major finding from this research was that of all the research, uh, the NAPAS for short, that we looked at, there were very few, almost next to nothing, reference of ICTs as a tool to aid in adaptation. Almost no reference. Um, it's as if uh, we would develop this and, and not even think about the potential that ICTs could have in helping us do that. So that was a major finding. I think it's important that at this stage, while we're busy developing those plants, we can think about them. But I guess also importantly is the fact that uh, the private sector needs to be involved in this.